Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's class, which is the Liquitex Basics and Basics Acrylic Fluid Botanical Folk Art Wall Art by Marlon Morrison. My name is Tim DePack, and I'm from Liquitex, and I'll be your moderator for today's class. I am being joined by Marlon Morrison, who will be your artist instructor for, today, for the class, and Marlon will be taking you through the class by providing information about the Liquitex products that are being used, Basics Acrylic and Basics Acrylic Fluid, and how they work well with each other, all in to create this beautiful uh, botanical folk art wall art. This class will be replayed 24 hours from now on the Michael's YouTube channel. So please feel free to follow along and create with Marla or sit back and relax and enjoy the class. And with that, I'd like to pass it over to Marla Morrison. Hey, thanks a lot, Tim. Thanks so much for being here. I'm really excited to paint this with you. I um, was excited to have this opportunity and to play with some colors that I may not typically put together, but I love the vibrancy. And so hopefully it'll be like a really cheery, fun time that we're going to have painting this together. Definitely, if you have questions, ask away and uh, we can try and help um, as we go along. But that being said, the first thing I wanted to do is I actually want to get some painting down so we can let that dry and then we can um, talk a little and then and we'll start adding our botanic elements. So with that, um, this is the piece we're going to make. Obviously, this it's a nine. I have a nine by 12 canvas. Of course, you can do this in any size that you want. If you want to make more, obviously, I, this was just a nice size uh, to use. The first color we're going to use for the background, that's what I want us to get going so we can let it dry is with the basics acrylic flu acrylic fluid paint um i really enjoy using those they're very as the name says they're very fluid they're easy to spread out so they're excellent for doing backgrounds or things where you want to block in color but you're not concerned about having a lot of texture so the color i chose for our background is light green permanent um, you can see the pigments used here it's in teeny tiny print but it should be on the front of your bottle so you see it's a mixed pigment color and it's just a really nice, uh, vibrant, I think of it kind of as like an electric green. Um, so let's get started. First thing you want to do when you have a basic acrylic fluid color is give it a gentle shake. You don't need to go really crazy with it. Just a gentle shake is nice um, because as it sits in storage, it can get a little bit of separation. If it's a new container, you may need to unscrew the cap and take the little foil um, leaflet off of the uh, bottle. I've obviously used mine before, so it's ready to go. I'm a little bit sloppy. If you don't want that to happen, you can just take a paper towel and clean it before storage and you won't get that kind of um, paint residue on the cap. Um, the brush, we I, I have it limited to two brushes and that was to help with detail. These are fairly small. So in order to get this covered quickly, we're gonna use our palette knife. And so all I'm gonna do is just squeeze a little bit of this at the top. You don't need a ton and you can always add more if you, if you need to. But I'm just going to take my palette knife and begin to scrape it down. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our brush and um, smooth it out a bit. So I'm going to add a little bit more. And you get all that pleasing scraping sound as you work. <laughs> Sounds like you're really actively attacking the painting, right? <laughs> The other thing too, since we want this to dry um, in, you know, in this session, try to spread out the paint as uh, evenly as you can, but the brush will help with that. I'm just using the knife to get it, to get it covered. If you have a big brush handy, feel free to use that. Um, you can certainly brush apply it if you prefer. Just for the sake of the tools that were that are actually on the list, I'm showing you how to do it with what we have listed. So you can use your palette knife, the light green permanent, you scrape it around. And as you can see, this can be a quick, efficient way to cover a large area. And because it's so fluid, it handles it very nicely. All right, so now I'm smoothing it slightly with my knife covering any gaps. I'll put this over here. I'm gonna wipe off my palette knife on a paper towel. And then the largest of the two brushes on the list is the size four flat. So now what I'm gonna do is just kind of gently um, stroke it across the surface just to even out some of that palette knife marks, some of the palette knife marks and give it more of a, a painterly quality. I'm going to do it kind of in a, you know, not a super organized way at first. And then I can do one more pass where it's a little more organized. 
But again, the point is to try and just even out the uh, palette knife strokes. And you know, you don't have to do this step, but I think it's a nice way because if it, you know, because the the folk art is so kind of a <laughs> leans on the the concept of like graphic shapes on vibrant color. If it's t if the background is has a ton going on, it can you know distract with that kind of graphic quality. So don't be afraid to pick up your canvas also if that's easier for you to, you know, move this brush around and get it where you need to go. I'm going to move some of my paint bottles and now I'm going to try and go in a slightly more uniform stroke top to bottom just to smooth it out. If from time to time it collects up too much paint, just wipe that off. Because again, we want kind of to get a thin layer to help it to dry. Um, so we can start painting on top of it. The Marla, basic... as you're doing that, I'm oh, just yeah. going to interrupt you one second. Yeah. Uh, I think you are using our new Liquitex Recycled Canvas for this, correct? I actually am. Yes, yes. Okay. So um, just, um, some people may not have known anything about that yet, but we do have a line of recycled yeah. canvas, which that canvas is actually made out of plastic recycled bottles that she's doing yeah. this painting on right now. So a uh, new product that's being found right now in the Michael store. So there's yeah. a picture right there. Yeah. So, that's so that particular it. canvas is three plastic bottles are equivalent to the canvas that she's working on right now. That's very cool. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And so just kind of trying to uniformly stroke it across here. I'm going top to bottom just because I think since a little bit of evidence of my brush stroking is going to show, I think of it somewhat like tall grass or whatnot. I just don't want it to be too distracting with a bunch of um, super painterly brush strokes. Um, but the basics fluid colors, I can just talk to you a bit about it while we're going through this. There's 48 colors in the range. Um, it's, you know, very fluid. It dries fairly quickly. Um, the colors are very vibrant. It's the same fine art pigments that we use in our professional series. It's just a more accessible price range. You could also consider it kind of like an everyday acrylic. Um, so bang for your buck, it's really quite nice. Uh, you don't feel like you're, you know, having to spend a ton of money to get a good volume of paint that's going to last quite a while. And all right, so I put that to the side. And let's do one more thing here. So we're gonna let this dry for a bit, okay? I've cleaned my brush, we're gonna let it dry. And let's see, what else did I wanna tell you? Oh yeah, so when, as you can see on this piece, when it dries, it's gonna be more of a satin sheen. The glossy areas on this piece are from the addition of our gloss super heavy gel, which we're going to use to mix with a few of the colors to offer dimension, okay? So we're gonna use this. We're also going to use our basics acrylic color and, uh, for certain parts of the painting. The reason this is nice, um, it's a good chance to let you know that basics and the basics acrylic fluid colors are fully compatible. They definitely work well on the same painted surface. Um, you can mix them together or you can layer them as we're going to do today. But a lot of times, if I'm wanting texture in a painting, I will use a more textural paint body to mix with my texture gel. Like in this case, I'm using the Gloss Super Heavy Gel. So I like using the basics rather than the basics fluid to, um, to get that beefier texture. Okay, doesn't mean I couldn't do it. It just means that I'm using this basics acrylic, which is already slightly thicker uh, viscosity to go with my thick gel. Does that make sense? Let me know if I need to clarify that, but that's one reason why we're have using three of the basics colors with four of the fluid, just to kind of show you how they can, can work together. Okay, so um, depending on where you are and how humid it is, um, it can take just a bit for this to dry. Um, so one thing you can do, like if you have a hair dryer handy, that's certainly something you can, can use to get it to dry more thoroughly. Um, I'm going to try and not do that so I can partner with you guys, but that's something you can know about acrylics is that they dry through the process of evaporation. And so that means if you're in a hot, dry climate, your acrylics going to dry more quickly than if you live in a climate that has a lot of humidity or if it's raining a lot while you're working. Okay. So let's kind of see here. 
So it's getting there, even though it's quite shiny, it doesn't have to be bone dry for us to paint on top of it. So I think we can start mixing some color. Um, on the edges, there's gonna be a little bit of the drawing still happening. So let's go ahead and start mixing our next color section and that'll give it a chance to dry a bit more, okay? So I've got my palette paper here and I've got my clean knife. And the way I started this piece is I started, I was thinking of the composition and kind of what I wanted to showcase in the piece. Let me push this to the side real quick. What I wanted to showcase. And I like the idea of having these two larger uh, simplified flower shapes kind of uh, interacting with each other. So I started with those and then started to fill in some other accents as I went. So we're going to start mixing the color for these large uh, simplified flower shapes first. And so to do that, we need to get the um, cadmium orange hue, the basics acrylic. And we'll squeeze a generous amount out. This is, uh, you know, about a teaspoon of color. And I'm using the basics fluid, the titanium white. Um, titanium white is probably one of the most color popular colors we make in any of the ranges we, we offer. Um, just because it's so useful in giving subtle tints to colors that you are using. So we've got some of that out. And then I'm also going to put a little bit of the cadmium yellow deep hue out. And then we'll put a generous amount of the gloss super heavy gel. And this is a new container. So this is what you'll see in any of the new containers. Uh, this just keeps the, you know, keeps whatever the jar, the paint from drying out in storage. I find it pretty easy just to take a palette knife and slice through it. Sometimes I rip it off, sometimes I leave it on just for the sake of time, I'll just leave it on like that. And so these are probably, you know, two big tablespoons of gel. Um, just like the color, the the mediums dry through evaporation as well. So there will be a slight amount of shrinkage um, when it dries. But what's cool about the gloss super heavy gel is it has solids in it that really minimize the shrinkage. So it does give you that nice um, oil like texture. And the other thing to know if, if mediums are new to you is you can add as much or as little acrylic paint as you'd like to acrylic mediums. It's not gonna compromise the integrity of the color or adhesion or anything like that. So I'm taking about a little over half of that gel amount. And I mixed all of that, about a mm, teaspoon of the, uh, the cadmium orange hue. And this, I usually mix by kind of scooping it up into a pile and then smashing it down. <laughs> and for a lot of artists, I think this is one of the most uh, fun parts of painting, that kind of soothing repetition of mixing the color with another color or with a medium. And so I'm going to take, I want it to be slightly, not, I want it to be slightly, a little more peachy cream. So I'm going to take just a tiny amount. I don't even know how you'd say that. Maybe, oh gosh, I don't know, like, Smidge. <laughs> smidge. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, a smidge like of the white. <laughs> yeah. That sounds good to me. I was going to say a dash, but I'm like, no, smidge is probably. That's what there is doing. technically like every little thing a dab, a smidge. And, and what they each have very specific uh, ratios. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sure whatever I use now is different than what I did the first time, too. So it's like I don't get too hung up on the exact proportion. But yeah, it's it's good to know I don't need a ton. And in fact, I think I want to make it a little lighter. It's always easier to add more than to try and um or add more of the color you're you're using for a subtle switch rather than to dump in a lot. Like if I got it too light, I'd have to add a whole bunch more gel and orange to make it. I, I don't know if I'm making sense, but in other words, make changes slowly so you don't have to waste a lot of paint trying to adjust it the way you want. You're better off building up to the color. Yes, go back. exactly. You're better off building up. So I want to add just a touch. This is like a pea size. I can say pea size with that because it holds its body a little in a different way. <laughs> so that just gives it a slight yellowish, warms it up just a bit. So I've got that creamy 
peach color. It's just slightly warmer with that um, cadmium yellow hue. And the other thing that's fun about that, I mean, I often try to mix colors, even though it's you, the, the most intense a color can be is the color right out of the container. I like to mix uh, them even just subtly because I think that kind of customizes it to your own vision, but also it can mm, add a sense of just the world of natural light, I think, because we live in a world of light and shadow. And when your color is slightly, has slight different um, things added to it or different hues combined, it's just a way of kind of in a very lovely way, getting those colors to work well together on the same surface. I don't know, it's kind of a, a, a Zen color theory thing that I think about. It's like a, I had a professor who talked about, you know, some artists will have a palette of colors they like working with, and then they'll add just a tiny bit of say a rose color to each color because that unifies it. So mixing your own colors can really give them kind of a signature uh, that I think is a nice way to um, personalize your work. Okay. So I think this should be touch dry enough. Again, it doesn't have to be bone dry because we aren't going to do a lot of scrubbing or anything. We're just going to be gently layering. And so um, what we're going to do, if you felt more comfortable or if you feel comfortable lightly drawing it out, you could do that. But, you know, at the same time, I think this is just kind of a fun way to um, express your vision and these fun uh, kind of silhouette uh, simplified shapes. So I hope you'll feel confident just going for it. Like I'm going to try and go for it here. And now that I look at it, I'm forgive me. I'm going to add a little more white. I want a little more of a contrast here. So we adjust as we go here. <laughs> I want it a little creamier, peachier. Okay. So you get the, that kind of coral color that you like best, mix it up with the gel. And then we're going to take a generous amount of it. And I'm kind of just looking, eyeballing. I want it right about here. So I'm thinking about one of those kind of petal shapes. So I will just start using the rounded edge of my palette knife and working uh, from the out of the petal inward. And I'm being very generous, generous with the with the gel. I want it to pop from the surface. I want it to have that physical texture. Um, and so more is more in a case like this. We want plenty of the gel. You notice that I'm not dragging the petals to the center yet. I want to uh, compose the whole flower first and then decide how I want to um, address the center. And just for my own ease of making these uniform, I'm gonna pick up the um, canvas and move it as I need. I hope you will feel free to do that as well. This color combo, I don't know about you, but it's like so vibrant and I, I just love it. It's very exciting to the eyes. I think about, you know, birds or bees that see in different um, color spectrum. And I think, what would they, how would they see these particular colors? You know, I don't know if they, what would they would look like to them as far as because whenever you see like infrared or UV um, light scales and how different the colors can look. Maybe I'm getting too off topic, but I, I'm sure you all have seen what I'm talking about. I would add something in there for you too, yeah. Marla, when yeah. you're done with that color, maybe to show it to everybody on the screen. I think the 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 shape of the knife that you're using as as well is is going to be really important because that's allowing you yeah. to make those nice curves in the flower there. So you yes. want to make sure that you're using something with a rounded edge as to a pointed edge. Right. Yeah, you're exactly right. Because, yeah, I've got a whole variety of different knives, which can be useful for various things. But, yeah, if I picked up one like this, it would do very different things for me than my um, rounded Liquitex size 16. So, um, yeah. yeah. I can just I see how you're swirling them. So you're getting a real nice edge on each one of those petals and you wouldn't be able to do that if it was like a pointed knife on the end so right and then this is the chance too. what's so wonderful about adding the gel is it gives you a really nice amount of working time because it's so thick so I can kind of push and pull the petals where I want them to be if I need to make you know I want it a little fuller here or change the shape slightly I can certainly do that uh let's pause there 
and I want to place this other one at the bottom. Hopefully you have some of the same color left. I need to scoop mine together. And I'll just put it right about here in the lower right section. And now it's gonna be more of like a large dot. Again, when I'm doing it, I don't know if you can see, try to bring it up closer. I'm just kind of pushing down with that rounded tip. And so it's like it paints itself because of the texture. You just push it down and I don't know the physics word, but whatever that pressure in the center just pushes it out evenly to the edge. So you feel like you're making a lot of progress pretty quickly. If you get this, uh, sorry, I did it without thinking, but you see how I've got like a little bit of a, here, a little bit of a pointed amount of the paint on the tip of the palette knife. If I don't like that, I can just take it down to my palette and knock that pointed edge off. So that way I'm sure that it's more rounded when I put it down. That's a little subtle kind of thing, but it can be helpful. Like see how that's rounded? There's no paint sticking off the edge. That's gonna give me a nice rounded petal shape when I press it down. And I'm going to do, oops, sorry. Let me try to get more in the center here. I'm going to press here and go around again. Let's see, I think, I think I'm gonna bridge that with just one more petal. So I wanna get a nice generous amount and just eyeball it in the center there. And press it down. Okay, so it's like frosting a cake, right? It's that thick frosting-like gel that's so fun to work with. And this, so the, the fluid, basics fluid, as you can tell, you know, dries quickly. This gel, part of your painting, it'll be touch dry, you know, by this evening, like you could very gently touch the top of it and it won't transfer to your fingers but it won't be dry through and through until, you know, several days. And if I were making this, uh, you know, uh, to send off to someone, I would allow a good week or two for it to dry thoroughly before I pack it up. But just because you wanna make sure that thick texture has enough of a chance for that water to evaporate out of the paint film, okay? All right, so we've got that blocked in. Let's mix up our next, um, let's do the, um, kind of pseudo tulip shapes. We'll do our next gel amount here. So I've got my cadmium yellow hue. I want, I've, well, you know, I've got enough gel there. So we'll just leave that. Hopefully you have enough gel out. If not, just get some more. I'm just gonna gently kind of scrape it to the side. It's okay with me that I have a little bit of the um, orange in there. It's not a big deal. I'm going to now take up this, uh, like a half table or half teaspoon of the cad yellow um, deep hue and mix it in and magic. It's like, I've got a whole, like three times as much paint. So that's the other chance to say that, you know, working with gels or other mediums, whether they're fluid or gel is a really economical way to work because it just takes a small amount of paint and then, and a, you know, a generous amount of gel. And now you've got a whole lot of color. Um, it will, I don't know if I said this, it will make your color more transparent, the more gel that you add. So be aware of that. And I think I want this to also have just a little bit of white in it um, just to uh, make it pop a little bit more. So I'll just put, since the fluid is so fluid, I did three drops of white directly on to my yellow mix here. Three drops. That's just going to kind of um, give a little bit of opacity because I really want it to pop from that darker value green background. Okay. So a question, Marla, as you're doing yeah. that, as a question about using both basics and basics acrylic fluid together. Sure. When you're mixing together, as so you put the drops of the fluid in there. Right. Um, does that, is there a better reason that you wouldn't have used the basics acrylic over the, or not using the fluid? Because hmm. so, would you be changing your viscosity if you're adding too much? Yeah. Yeah, in all honesty, this was a chance to minimize the amount of colors needed for the demo. <laughs> because okay. if I had every single, you know, if I hadn't, 
listed every single thing, sure, having the basics acrylic titanium white would partner probably a little bit better since I'm doing thicker, but because there's, it took only three drops of my basics fluid, I don't think that that compromised the texture too terribly. And that way you're able to use the, the uh, basics fluid for both mixing with the fluid color and the, the base, the uh, traditional basics or the basics. So you're color. more like altering the color, but not changing yeah. the dust. Yeah. Because it only took, yeah, like okay. three drops. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, it's a great question because if you had the whole studio with, you know, I have my basics acrylic and titanium white and I've got fluid and white. Sure, if you're doing thinner, keep it with the fluid. If you're doing thicker, keep it with the basics. But um, for the purposes of this, this the uh, fluid white works perfectly fine with the gel because they're fully compatible. And the three drops isn't going to affect the texture. Too and I so. see that going the opposite way too, because if you're starting off with more of the fluid and you yep. want to build up a little bit more thickness and viscosity on that, you would just put a little bit of the regular basics acrylic in there. You got it. Yep. Okay. So let's do this. I said we're going to do the tulips, but let's um, finish out part of the center and then we'll do the tulips. So hopefully you have your yellow mix. This is going to be very similar to do like doing the petals at the bottom. We're just going to add a few little kind of inner petals on this flower. Now you you want to get it thick enough because you probably probably will pick up a little bit of that coral color and that's not a problem. It's just I want to try and get it thick enough where I don't have to worry about that too much. So again I'm being generous with the amount here and so I'm just going to go around very similarly to what I did with the with the first petals and start at the edge, work towards the center and rotate your canvas as needed. If you pick up a little of the orange, that's okay. If, if you don't want it, you can just drag it off on the palette paper and then just know that you can add, like if I don't want that little, I don't know if you can see, I got a little bit of an orange smear there. If I don't want that, I can just add more yellow on top. So even though the yellow is a lighter value color, the, the sheer thickness of it allows me to layer over that that darker value orange. So I'm gonna do the same thing here and here. So just eyeballing it, no, you know, major math involved, just kind of imagining that inner ring of uh, petals. Okay, and we'll do the same thing down here. Scoop up a little bit, dab it. It's fun just dabbing, <laughs> dabbing the color on. It's like making thick dots. And then you'll notice too, I probably said this without thinking about it. If I get a little orange in my knife, I just take that chance just to mix it into the yellow because it was so tiny. I don't think it's going to disturb the hue dramatically. I had such a tiny amount of it. And so I'm not gonna waste that yellow just because I had a teeny tiny amount of that corally orange in it. Same here. And then get one more little, oops, sorry, one more dot. Okay, now we can put this down and now I'm going to re-scrape my yellow. And I wanna go ahead and do these pseudo tulipy shapes. So we'll start with the one at the top and just place it down. Again, I'm just kind of imagining the shape. It's almost like kind of like a, a cat, well, or like an animal paw, cat paw too. It's just kind of a three little bump type flower, <laughs> three bump flower. So nothing super fancy, just taking that thick texture and again, using the round edge of the palette knife to flesh out the rounded edges. You can move it, turn it as you need if that makes it easier. I kind of want that shape to be a little different. And again, you get so much working time or play time with the thick texture. It's, it's, a, it's quite nice um, to manage there. Round that off a little if I want, okay. And then we've got another shape right about here. So I'll take some more of my yellow and 
Well, let's see, we'll put, let's start with the center little bump and move to the edge and do a little bump on the left. And a bump on the right. Can't think of, I guess they're like pedally kind of projections. I was thinking tulip, simplified tulip. So that's why I was saying tulip here. And just think of it, the bottom is like a U shape. And again, just turn your canvas or your arm, whatever it takes to get the rounded part of the palette knife, wherever you want the round rounded edge. All right. And if it's too pointy, you can just fill it in a bit. I think maybe it needs to be a little bit bigger here so I can adjust that. And then let's have one sweet little tulip head. I'll make it a little bit tinier, have it down here. And of course you can add more if you really get into any of the particular shapes more than others. Um, feel free to add and embellish at will. And this is your creation here. You can definitely just think of this as a, a starting point. Um, because that is, to me, I, I see um, this kind of folk art or simplified shapes as really inviting themselves, or they, it's like they invite you to play with the shapes and um, think about color repetition, think about shape repetition. But again, if you're, as you're doing this, if you say, you know what, I, I want to tweak the composition a bit. I want to put another one of these tulip shapes, you know, on the other side, feel free to do that. And that will kind of make it more your own. Okay. So kind of place that in. So that's the textural, oh, we need to do the center. We're almost to the end of the textural passage just to give that more drawing time. So I have a tendency when I'm done with a painted color, I just scrape it to the center to kind of make sure I have enough palette room. And I'm going to clean off my palette knife and we're going to get out the um, deep violet. Basics acrylic color. This is one of my favorite colors. And I really liked these three together. It's like a split complement palette. You've got your violet and then like a um, orange yellow and a yellow orange. <laughs> so they all kind of work together nicely as a split, split complement. I'm going to grab a little bit more of my gel just to um, place with the violet here. It's probably about a one-to-one -one ratio of gel to color. This was a like a uh, kind of like a large P amount of the violet. And I'm going to add a little bit of white to it as well. It's still going to be the uh, basics acrylic fluid that I'm going to use. Just to again, it's it's fairly transparent and I wanted it slightly um, more opaque. So I'll do the same thing, pick it up, give it a gentle shake and put, let's do three drops again, just three drops of the fluid. This is a smaller amount, but I want it slightly, um, uh, you know, slightly lighter in value. Chime in on something. That's something yeah. that's great about the whole vessel of the basics acrylic fluid, because the way you can pour it, as you mm -hmm. see, Marla was very easily able to control the amount of paint that she was putting out on the paper at one time. So, yeah, very true. Awesome. Very true. So, okay. So now I've got my center violet color that I'd like to use. And I'm just going to, I'll start with the uh, larger flower. You get a fairly big dollop on there, like a, like a giant pea. <laughs> um, and I will just dab that in the center and it can be a little tricky. So just make sure that you uh, rotate your canvas around as needed. And you can like, see how I got it. That's inevitably going to happen. Just, I got a little yellow there. So all I have to do is take a little bit more of my violet and paint over it or leave it if you like it, but trying to make kind of a more defined center. Okay. So I'll do the same thing here. Take a pea size amount and just place it. I'm going to get rid of any edging on the paint and just kind of pop it right in the center there. And I think I'll leave that. I'll not fuss with it too much. 
All right, and now let's do this since we have before. Okay, I really wanted this violet for this larger silhouette. And that's something too, when I'm working on a composition, I had the two main characters, right? And then I liked these three kind of um, side characters, I guess you could say texturally. But then as you look at this, you've got some spaces that would be nice to have some focal point of different visual texture. Uh, but I still wanna kind of echo the color here. So this is where I'm gonna take that deep violet and just brush it thinly. And you'll see that it has slightly, well, it might be hard to see on here, but the basics and basics fluid are both satin when dry, but maybe you can see that there's ever so slightly a bit of brush texture here, um, which is different than the basics fluid, which will have, which will have none. Well, you know, it just is virtually completely flat when dry. But I just mentioned that because you'll see that as you're working, but I'll squeeze out some of the basics, uh, deep violet, I want it to be different. I don't want any gel in it. So that's why I'm gonna squeeze out another like a quarter teaspoon amount. And I'm going to take my, um, where did it go? My, oh, it fell down. My flat number four brush that we use to put the green. Okay, I'm gonna take that. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the white I had up here, just a little bit. You could just dip another bit of white in it if you wanted. And I'm just using it. You could use your palette knife, but I'm just, since it's such a tiny amount, I'm using my brush to mix it. That's usually kind of a no-no, but yeah, I'm doing it. So <laughs> it's not, it's only a no-no just because it can wear your brushes out quicker if you do it all the time. But if it's a small amount, I, I will often do it. Okay, so my brush is nice and loaded with color. And now I'm gonna start with the stem first and just kind of eyeball where I want it. And I'm going to use the really crispy flat edge of this flat brush and just do, you know, a few strokes down. So this is, that's why flat brushes can be really nice. Even though they're quite wide, when you look at, use the end, you can get some very thin marks, okay? So you can go over that as you need if you, if you choose to. Then I'm going to start with this top leaf shape. And I'm going to end up turning the canvas to do the other side. So I'm just gonna go around and do, you see how I'm using, it's almost like working with calligraphy. You're using the angle of the brush to help you. So I'm starting, I want a crispy point of the leaf. So I'm using the crispy edge of the brush, starting and dragging down. I'm gonna do that for, all of uh, four or sorry there's only i'm going to do it for all of the leaves i'll do one side at a time that's just to make it easy um, for viewers that so i'm not constantly move, moving the canvas but you can move it as you see fit but here i'm going to do this one going downward because again i want a clean edge ending in a point and now I'm going to turn my canvas and finish out each of these. So I'll start up here at the top leaf, start at the point and go downward and fill it in. So you can see how it really just takes, you know, essentially two strokes for these uh, simplified leaf shapes. Here I started the stem. Sometimes I started the point, sometimes I started the stem. But the idea is I'm, Without a lot of um, effort, I'm able to use this large brush to create these uh, leaf shapes. And then I'll turn this one this way. Yeah, I'm gonna start at the base again and push it forward. It's whenever you're using um, any type of tool, whether it's a palette knife or a brush, it can be really handy to think about how how do I hold this to really help me with my angle or help me with the way I want to create a, you know, a stroke? Um, like with the palette knife, it was using the rounded edge. With this leaf, it's using the crispy edge of the, of the uh, brush. So it's really getting those tools to work the best they can for you as the artist. Let's do this side now. I'm down and I'll let this one, I actually dropped a leaf off of this one, that's fine. I told you it probably wouldn't be exactly the same. <laughs> um, draw, okay, put that down and then do another here going off the edge. 
and turn it, pick up a little more color. I want it to look like some of that leaf has gone off the edge. So again, just doing the same thing here. And you can see how nicely that, that dark value of violet is um, popping off the surface of the green. They, I really like those the interplay of those two colors together. And we'll do the same thing here, this time coming from the stem and going outward. Very calligraphic when you use a, a flat brush. Nothing saying you couldn't use a round. I just feel like I can work a little more quickly and, and evenly with a flat brush uh, from time to time. So I did one less leaf. Um, I could add one little tiny one down here. Just let's do that just to try and be a little more consistent. Let's add a little, little tiny, tiny one. And we'll do that here. Okay. All right. Happy with that. So I'm going to wipe off my paper towel. I'm going to rinse it in my water. And now I'm kind of looking and like, what should I do next? So for some of these details, to be completely honest with you, I didn't remember which ones I did first, because at some point, a lot of times when I get into painting, I'll start with the big ideas and then I'll start to just really respond to how, where the painting's taking me. It's like, I always think of it kind of like a conversation. It says something, I say something back kind of thing. And then I just flow with it. It might sound a little bit corny, but I just see it that way. And I, that's one of the things that kind of keeps me coming back to painting is that I really like that interaction between the surface and you know what I want to do with it. So I think what would make most sense now is if I use, if I mix up some of the, um, the basics acrylic fluid and we work on these stems here okay and the uh, this is the light blue light blue violet really beautiful color i'm going to give it a gentle shake and i can push up my palette paper here put just a like probably five drops of color out and this is where i'm going to pick up my um, liquitex freestyle number two round brush just, I do remember using this brush for this and I felt like it was a little bit handier for um, the stem shape. So I'm going to, I want it to kind of come at, you know, right around here, this part of the flower and I'm gonna have it curve down and then we're ultimately gonna have kind of a stone looking shape down here. So let's start at the top. Don't worry too much. And I'm not gonna touch directly against the gel because I don't want it to, um, I don't want to bump it right now. So I didn't, I'm not going directly up to the gel. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring that down to right about there. And then I'm just, I'm going to make these kind of curvilinear leaves. And do the same thing here. You can see how I think I did. I think I derailed my train of thought earlier, so I apologize. But I think where I was going to go, I was going to talk about how when when working on paintings like this, it can be very soothing. And I also almost kind of think of it like doodling, because you know I'm just using these simplified shapes and thinking about where I'd want to put them next. And they're not really complicated to do. They're very loose. Um, and so it's it takes some pressure off. It's kind of thinking about the composition and where I want to place the different elements. Okay, so I've got the stem on my little, my little flower. I'll do another couple of little curvy leaves. And let's have this one go all the way down to the base of the painting. Okay. And I don't believe I have that particular, um, I don't believe I have it anywhere else in the painting. So I'm going to clean my brush. I want to beef it up just a little bit up here. I didn't have quite enough paint on my brush. So that's something you can do too. Uh, you can just add another 
layer as needed if you want it to be just a little more opaque, depending on how I didn't have, I didn't load up my brush super dramatically and uh, it didn't drop a lot of paint. So now what I can do to get it to be a little more connected to the flower, I'm gonna come in more carefully and just hold it and just butt it, butt the edge of my brush up to the edge of the flower. Okay. And so that's something you can do too if you choose to. Okay, I'm gonna clean my brush. And let's work on now, let's work on these kind of fun, almost like sea an enemy. Um, fingerly, finger kind of shapes. Let's get those in there. And I'm noticing too, and I was afraid of this. I think what happened was I used a bigger brush. I was concerned about getting this part done. So I didn't add white to my green. So this green is a little lighter value than this green. So it's not any occasion to panic or anything. It just means that I'm going to want to possibly adjust the value of these anemone-like things to pop a bit more on this dark value green, okay? You can see it's slightly darker value, right? So my mistake on that, but I don't think it's going to um, be, you know, disrupt the whole <laughs> process of the painting here. All right, so I've got, I'm gonna take the, uh, some more of the light green permanent, and I'm going to put just a couple of drops of it out on the surface. So literally two drops. And I'm gonna take this lovely, lovely color called turquoise blue. You can see it's opaque. Give it a few gentle shakes. And I'm going to put more like five or six drops out. And then I'm going to mix those together. And for the sake of beefing up the uh, value a bit, just to make it pop a little bit more on my darker value green. I'm actually gonna pick up a tiny amount of my deep violet and mix it in. Just wanna make it slightly deeper to sit on that um, dark green background, the light green permanent, or it's the, kind of a darker dark green. This is something I'll do too that I think can be really helpful. If I'm trying to see how a mixed color is gonna re relate with the background, I'll just have the color on my palette knife and hold it up to the background and kind of think, okay, is that looking like I hoped it would? And that's a way I can decide, you know what, I wanna, I wanna make it a little bit deeper. So I'm gonna add some more of that deep violet to my blue. And we just adjust as we go. Okay, so I think that's nice. I like how it kind of gave it slightly more of a violet cast. Clean that off. I'm gonna take up my, pick up my round brush again. And let's start with this fun one on, oh, you know what? Pause on that one. Oh, sorry, yep. Yeah. This is important. Let's do the stone shapes first. So it's okay, we've got the color mixed. Let's do these kind of stone shapes next. Okay, so we've got that color. Really all I did is I took some of this um, turquoise and I added white to it. So this is literally where I take a color I've already mixed, scrape it to the side and just add some white. So you're working with a similar hue, but you're using a tint with, you know, next to a color that isn't a tint. So I'm adding, that was like probably three drops of color and I'm adding three drops of white to it. And so what that does is it keeps these two colors unified, but I've just made a tint now. So because I need plenty of color volume, I'm actually gonna scoop, scoop a little bit more of that turquoise and violet that I mixed over to my white. I just wanna make sure I have enough for the stone shapes. And I think that's good. And I'm going to use, in this case, I'm gonna use the, um, go to the flat number four, scoop some up on your brush, and we can just quickly paint in with that lighter value turquoise, paint in this kind of a stone, I think of it almost like a stone shape. Quick and easy. 
nothing super fancy there, but it kind of it grounds that flower, gives a little bit of a um, object in the foreground to, to look at there. So I'll paint that one in. And then there's a little kind of fun floating shape here that I'll put in almost like a rounded, well, kind of like a boomerang shape, I guess. Okay. And then last but not least, we've got another larger shape up at the top here. So you can see typically what I'm doing is wherever I want that color to be distributed, I do it all at the same time. Um, partly because of how quickly acrylics dry, I wanna make sure that I have plenty of working time. But also I think it makes sense compositionally because uh, the way your eye grazes across a painting is a lot of times due to how the colors are placed. You know, how where is your eye focusing? How is it processing through the composition? And I, for myself, I know in painting, a lot of times I'm considering, you know, how the colors are placed on the surface. So I don't have to go too far with that. It's just kind of a funky little funky little shape, curvilinear shape. So I'll take a second and look at that and see how it's all kind of flowing together. You can almost say in the sky it's kind of like a weird cloud shape. So I think I'm good with that. I'm going to leave that there and then we'll jump back to our darker value turquoise mix. So I'm cleaning my flat brush because we're going to use the round brush now for the more anemone-like um, projections. So I'm dipping my round brush in, I'm gonna dry it off to touch, but I'm drip dipping it in that darker value. And um, let's start with this one over here since I can paint more of it without having to disturb the color that's already down. So again, I'm just kind of thinking of fun little, weird little finger-like projections and just painting those in. Kind of a bit like fat squigglies. All right, and put one up here. And again, because these dry so quickly, I can, um, I'm just being very careful by the gel. Some of the edge of the gel has probably already gotten ever so slightly touched dry. And in fact, even though I just put this down, I think this is dry enough for me to very gently paint on top. I could be wrong. I'm just gonna gently paint on top of it. If yours isn't quite dry enough, you can, can save it for later. Or sometimes what I'll do is if I didn't, if it wasn't dry enough and I rushed it, because I have to tell y'all, I can be a little bit of an impatient painter. I'll just come back later and I'm like, ah, I rushed it. It's kind of smeared, but you know what? I'll, I just paint over it. You know, I put a second coat on it because by the time I jump around and do another piece, I can probably come back and and uh, adjust that. Oh, I just see I blipped up there. That's okay. This is a perfect kind of painting to uh, work with that, not a biggie. Okay. So I'm gonna connect that little projection there. And let's turn this. Because I put my thumb in that. <laughs> telling y'all I can I'm sure Tim knows my palette knives are always a mess my brushes are a mess I don't know what it is but I just can get things all over me just from you know the short session in the studio all right so I've got my palette knife I, I messed up my yellow a bit here what I can do I can scrape up that gel because it's probably not completely dry and so later I can paint more green on top of it and since I blub I kind of my thumb got into that yellow, I can just take some more of my yellow here and fix it. And you can see that gel is still gonna accept. If I wanted to, I could put more painting over it, but I, I think I'm just gonna do it with green later. Okay, so easy enough fix there. All right, so I'm gonna do this other kind of anemone shape over here. So, let me just find this really a relaxing way to work. Kind of, it reminds me, I mean, 
I always think of um, artists from our shared history who explored different ideas. And for these kind of folk botanicals, I do think a lot of an artist like Matisse, who, um, especially later in life, he would do these cutout pieces where he would take uh, painted paper and cut it into large, interesting shapes and place them on the surface. And a lot of, when I was kind of thinking some of this through, I really had some of his shapes in mind um, from his cutout days. Because they, you know, these are kind of flower-like, obviously leaf-like, but then these are not necessarily anything that you'd find on a flower. Maybe if you zoomed in close to, you know, like a piece of pollen or something, but it, it really can get abstract. But I think our brain still reads it all as something botanic because, you know, because of the cur kind of the curvilinear nature of it, right? Okay. So that isn't completely dry, but again, I can come in later and add paint over it as I need to. That's part of the challenge of um, wanting to do this in a short amount of time. You wanna have a, an interesting and complex enough piece, but sometimes the, the drying time allowed can inhibit getting it done precisely in the session. But what's nice about this too, if you're working and you get behind, uh, I know Michael saves these and you can always rewatch things at your leisure. So if you have to stop and you know adjust something. So this I can paint over later because I almost always have a little extra paint left. So there are my kind of um anemone light projections. And let's see, what can we do next? So there's also some fern shapes which are somewhat of a dark turquoise and I'm trying to be very mindful on time. Tim, are we going to be okay if we go a little bit over? Yes, I think we can go over a couple minutes. We are good. Okay. okay. So what we'll do here, again, I think I'm going to change it up. So for the fern, I had it a darker color, but I am going to make it lighter because my background got darker than I wanted. So I'm going to adjust on the fly for the composition of the painting. I'm going to take this turquoise and I'm going to make it quite a bit lighter now. So we're going to take a tiny dab of that turquoise and add... So we'll say one drop of the turquoise and four drops of white. And I want it to pop even more than that. So I'm gonna scrape a little bit of that to the side and add two more drops of white. <laughs> Let it be different here. And y'all are kind of getting some insight into the way I work. I, I really will adjust as I go to make it look as pleasing as possible, just because I think it's more important to end up something with, you know, end up with something that you enjoy rather than something that, oh, is a, an exact copy of something else already done, right? So, all right, so we're gonna take this fern shape and we're gonna make it lighter, quite a bit lighter. It's gonna have a different kind of vibe to it now because of that, but I just think this, it's gonna read better with this painting. Okay, so we'll start. I've got my round brush again. I'm gonna bear down very, very subtly or slightly and just um, quickly make some stroke marks from the edge towards the center of the stem. And yeah, I'm slightly, slightly curving it. But I think that's about what I wanted to do. All right, and then we'll do another here. And do the same thing. Start at the bottom this time. And just dab those little fern-like leaves in. And just quick strokes. Okay. And we're just about there. I think one last, there's two last, 
actually three other elements, which I think we can do fairly quickly. Um, there are the light violet dots around the tulip shapes, the um, light leaves, and then the darker value um, outlining. I think I want to show you all the darker outlining because I think that could be a little more challenging if you're doing this, um, you know, if we have to end before we can get it, com you know, complete, complete. So let me do this. We're going to take some of just the straight turquoise. And I'm taking my number two size brush and I'm just going to very carefully outline these tulips. Now, more than likely, as you're dragging it, you're going to drag into some of the yellow. That's okay. Just wipe your brush onto the palette paper and dip it back in the turquoise and go for it again. Um, just part of the process there. So there's a bit of the outlining there, the outlining here. And just trying to work quickly, but also just know that if it if it drags into the yellow, you can easily fix it. And do the same thing at the one at the top. Uh, one thing about these uh, folk botanical idea, it's the large shapes have a certain texture. The gel gives it a, a visual, a actual texture. But then the variation of lines, thick and thin, curvilinear with, um, I guess it's all very curvilinear, but like these stone shapes with these more delicate shapes, all of those contrasts really add visual interest. And same thing here. I think having the thin outline around that fatter, chunky tulip shape is a nice uh, visual contrast. So yeah, I got a little yellow in there. I'll just dab it off and do that there. And the way to do the dots, there's different ways you can do it. You could um, use the end of your brush if you wanted to, I'm sorry, yeah, the, the wooden end of your brush to, to pop some little dots. Um, I think I'm gonna use the tip. And in order to get my color quickly, I've got some of the light violet here, light blue violet of the fluid. All I'm gonna do is take a little of that to the side and add, so that's like one drop of the light blue violet to, let's do three drops of the titanium white uh, fluid. I want it to be really, really light. And again, it's giving that visual contrast. So mix that up, dip in the tip of my brush and just do these quick little dots by giving them the little, um, I don't know, is it the pistols or the stamens? I don't remember biology class enough to know exactly what they are <laughs> on the parts of the flower. But a lot of times when I'm doing flower doodles, I, I like to add dots. I think it kind of evokes that biology of the flower and uh, this seems to work well. Okay, and then last but not least is giving a suggestion of some very, very simplified leaves um, around the tulips. So let's do this. Um, since I adjusted the fern color here, I think maybe what I will do is, um, let's use that fern color for the leaves. Uh, if you don't have any left, basically what it was was the turquoise, like one drop of turquoise to say four drops of white. So you could mix that up quickly if you need some more, but I'm going to just do some very um, light little, I'm using my number two brush and I'm gonna do some very simple little uh, tulip leaves right next to the little tulip shape. So they kind of look like floating little leaves. But I'll have one coming up here. And then 
last but not least, I actually think I can use this one to disguise that little mark I made. We'll see. I still will probably want to paint over it later. <clears throat> but I think that's pretty much it. So a little over time. So to make this more like I'd wanted, I would paint over the little areas that um, mixed into the wet paint. But I think I'm pretty happy with it. It has a darker value than the original in the background. But again, um, that was just kind of the nature of, of not having the bigger brush handy to um, I wanted to get going with the painting on that. So anyways, I hope that that is helpful. Chanel, if you want to switch it to front facing. Um, it, if you paint it along with me, I'd love to see what you did. I'd love to see if anyone kind of took their own spin on it. Um, I don't, we can get into gallery view here. Did anyone paint along with? Awesome. Rishka, gorgeous. I love your big leaf on the side. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Tim, did you have anything else you wanted to say to everyone? I'd just like to say thank you, everybody, for joining us. I hope that the class was helping everyone as far as any questions they might have had on Liquitex Basics and Basics and Acrylic Fluid, how they both complement each other in your tools that you use to create art. And I think Marla did a great job. I love the colors that she picked. And just so everybody knows, all these color, colors are available in the Michael stores. So each one, whether it's the basics or basics acrylic fluid and online as well. So I look forward to seeing everybody again in our next class. I'm sure Marla's the same way. And uh, everybody yes. had a great time. Yeah. And the other thing, too, just to add to that, Tim, yeah, be sure and tag. Uh, is it uh, Michael's? Uh, Chanel, you could say, is it put it in the chat, maybe. Is it at Michael's or uh, Learn with Michael's classes? One way to tag so learn with Michaels. Learn with Michaels. Yeah, if you do tag learn with Michaels, um, I think Michaels will often try to showcase artists who worked in a different workshop. And then also, if you want to tag me at Marla Morrison Art, it's what's been on my um, overhead view at Marla Morrison Art. That would be wonderful too, because I like to share what uh, what people do in the class too. But thanks again. Thanks, Chanel. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.